This portion of the game brought to you by Red Lion Hotels. Proud to be a State B sponsor. Welcome back inside Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena. Just moments away from tip-off between Tudor Lake and Colfax and the 2B boys. The winner will go to the state championship game tomorrow. Let's take a look at your Colfax Bulldogs starting lineup. Brandon G. Feller, Kyle Johnson, Tyler Stevenson, Jay Hart, and Justin Baraducci. Your starting five. They are coached by their fourth-year head coach, Reese Jenkins. Meanwhile, for Tudor Lake, 17-3 and three on the season. The Fighting Ducks, their starting lineup. Connor Vicarious, Jeremy Fuller, Zach Hayes, Anthony Heinzman, and Austin Hoffman. And their head coach, longtime head coach, Eric Swanson. Those are your starting lineups and tonight's coaches. All right, take a look now at the road to State B. Brought to you by CenturyLink, connecting you to what matters most. And, Bill, we take a look at how both teams got here. And Colfax getting past Oroville, LaConnor to get here. And uh, they are now in that state final, state semifinal against Tudor Lake, which has beaten Shoreline Christian and Dayton. Time for tip-off. It is brought to you by your Inland Empire Toyota dealers. Toyota is moving forward. Tudor Lake will start off in the white and blue. Blue and gold for the Bulldogs of Colfax. And this is a three-point attempt from Anthony Heinzman. As the ball goes out of bounds airing that one right away and uh you know i mentioned this last night bill Ames. it's not uncommon to see these shooters even though they have a game under their belts kind of get acclimated to that uh depth perception playing in a larger venue than you're used to when you're playing in those cozy gyms well it, it really you never get quite used to it sam it's, it's such a different environment and last night they actually played on the other court we have two courts here at the arena although that doesn't seem to be much of a problem for Kyle Johnson. Right on cue, dropping the long one. Kyle Johnson opens up the scoring for Colfax. A 3-0 Bulldog lead. Lightning Ducks looking to answer. Jeremy Fuller with the point guard duties tonight. Anthony Heinzman, the pass. And here's Zach Hayes on the drive. Nowhere to go. Not a whole lot of room there. And a rebound ripped down from Kyle Johnson, getting it done on both ends of the floor so far for the Bulldogs. Yeah, this is what you're going to see from Colvax all night long. When they rebound the basketball. They want to get it to their 6'3 point guard, Brandon Jefeller. Entry pass going to Jefeller, and he was tied up underneath the rim. Jump ball. And possession arrow now going to Colfax. Colfa Colfax works hard to get the ball to G. Feller in a lot of different places. You saw there, trying to get it to him in the low block after he brings the ball down the court. Big, long 6'3 junior for Colfax. Here's Kyle Johnson now from the top of the key. Be mindful of that shot clock. There's five on the clock. Nice little spin move. Won't bank it in, though. Can Justin Baraducci, and here comes Tuta Lake. Berducci had a big game last night, Sam, 11 points. A lot of them coming in the all-important fourth quarter where Colfax was able to pull away from McConnor. Zach Hayes now from the wing will give it up to Connor Vicarious. Around the wheel they go. Austin Hoffman entry pass. Here's Hayes. Back out for three. No good from Jeremy Fuller. Long rebound. Actually touched the referee. Will is that a jump ball when it touches the referee last? Part of the court. <laughs> runs out of bounds. But he tried. He tried to get out of the way. That, that ball was just going right at him, though. It'll be too late ball. And sometimes you can't avoid it. Connor Vicarious bringing it up now for the Ducks. Good crowds on hand for both schools here this evening in the semifinal matchup. Backing up is Hayes. Kick out once again. Fuller for three. A little bit long. And a rebound pulled down from Jay Hart. Yeah, not a lot of motion right now for that Tudor Lake offense. A lot of standing around. Settling for the jumper. G. Feller the pass now to Stevenson. Just one basket made between these two teams as we near the five-minute mark. Shot blocked. And here comes Fuller. Little underneath pass. Heinzman. Missing from point blank uh, range and uh, Bulldogs now dodging a bullet. Yeah, Heisman's got to get himself in better position to catch that ball and go straight up. He got caught underneath the basket. Pass was right there. Here's Kyle Johnson on the drive. He'll pass it off at the last second. Great assist 
and Tyler Stevenson with the finish. It's a 5-0 Colfax lead. A great job by Johnson. I actually thought he was a little too unselfish there. Was in the air with a clear bath to the basket, but decided to dish it off. Worked out well for Colfax. Colfax not too far away from the Spokane area, about an hour or so away. Fairly clear roads to get here. And there's a runner from Zach Hayes, and the Ducks are on the board. They trail 5-2. to two. Uh, Look at the pressure for Tudor Lake, and G. Feller not phased whatsoever by that, and a great job. Although That'll we're be a non-shooting foul. The yeah. block happening before the shot, so Jay Hart will not go to the free throw line. Boy, so many times you see continuation, Sam. I was a little surprised that they didn't give him the basket. Seemed to be in the shooting motion, so break for Tudor Lake. Tudor Lake's going to have to figure out a way to get a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end. A little bit too much one-man one show out there when the Ducks have the ball. Here in the four-minute mark, 5-2. to two, Colfax with the lead. This is Baraducci, the handoff. Johnson for three, it'll go. Kyle Johnson with two three-pointers on the young night. It's eight to two, Colfax. Well, he can shoot it. He had two last night in their opening round game here. So he definitely could shoot the ball. Two of seven last night. Starts off uh, two of two here from beyond the arc. Jeremy Feller's shot no good. Colfax will get the rebound. G. Feller brings it up. He might take this coast to coast. He'll pull up. He'll take a jumper. No good. Rebound pulled down by Connor Vicarious. In ahead. Now in transition. Jeremy Fuller with the finish. A little slow on defense was Colfax getting back there. Well, some of that is the fact that G. Feller, the point guard, takes it strong to the hole as Tudor Lake gets a turnover. Not able to get back. We're going to take a timeout. Eight to four the score. Colfax leading it by four. 314 to go here in the first quarter. State B coverage on SWX being brought to you by Northwest Seed and Pet. Northwest and the Spokane's complete seed and pet supply. Welcome back inside the arena. Eight to four the score. Colfax leading it by four. And Tudor Lake called for a charge. It will be Bulldog basketball as they try to extend the lead. But how about the turn of events for Tudor Lake cranking up the defense and getting some points off of turnovers? Well, pressure defense can lead to your offense very quickly. And you see that with the Ducks picking up full court. G. Feller, nice job though, really seeing the court. Open look at three. Will it go? No, it won't. Brady Ellis into the ball game as the ball goes out of bounds. And it will remain Bulldog basketball. G. Feller to inbound. Boy, that guy has superior court vision, does G. Feller. On the inbound. And going right to work is Baraducci. That one won't fall. Trying to play a little tether ball down there. Ball going up and down. And finally, Baraducci, when the smoke clears, will gather that ball once again for the Bulldogs. Yeah, plenty of hustle on both sides right now. It's the thing you love about the State B tournament, Sam. No one ever seems to give up on a play. Regardless of where it's at, they're always working hard to try to get those loose balls. G. Feller kicking back out now. Here's Hart. Entry pass. No, he'll hold on to it now. 15 on the shot clock. 2.25 to go here in the first quarter. Vicarious, great hands. You can see him 
Get his hand on plenty of balls here early in this game. G. Feller takes the shot with six on the shot block, and that will fall. That's a long two to make it 10 for Colfax. If Colfax can hit from the outside the way, the way they have here in this first quarter, it's going to be a long night for the Tudor Lake Ducks. Tudor Lake uh, generates a lot of their offense on the defensive side. How about Vicarious with a three? No good. Had a wide open look. A rebound by Corey Keefe. Really the difference thus far in the game, Sam. Tudor Lake not able to find the stroke from the outside. Their bucket's coming in transition or underneath. Really haven't been close. On the drive. That'll go. Will it count is the question. It will not. A traveling violation. You mentioned the outside shooting. Tudor Lake just six of 15. And, you know, that's about where you'd expect, uh, expect I guess, uh, last night in the quarterfinal win against Dayton. But, you know, sometimes, Sam, you look at the misses and you just see that they're really not anywhere near the rim when they shoot. They, it, even from our vantage point, you can see that they're really not anywhere near the rim. Although, again, another bad play by Colfax trying to break that press. Nearly got an easy two points of foul at midcourt. So they'll have to inbound from midcourt. But you see that defense giving the Bulldogs fits right now. Well, they get the defense figured out. If they can figure out a way to get their offense together, Tudor Lake's uh, right back in this game. Tudor Lake, a, a tournament-tested team. You look at uh, some of the games they've played in the regular season. They played five games just in the regular season alone against teams that have reached the state tournament here in Spokane. A miss, and the Colfax Bulldogs will bring it up. That's Brandon G. Feller, the junior guard. He's going to, I think he's going to take it to the rack. No, he won't. Stripped at the last second by Zach Hayes. He makes a great defensive play, and he'll say Tudor Lake ball now. Well, it looked like it got knocked out of his hands there by Hayes. But to give the ball back to Tudor Lake. Great Not hands official. once again. And the official uh, very emphatic with his call, so he clearly saw something that, that the casual viewer would not have standing uh, by his call. Here's Zach Hayes on the drive. The little floater will not go. And Brandon G. Feller will get the rebound here in half court. Inside of a minute, still 10 to 4. A low scoring first quarter here in the state 2B semifinals. For those young guys and gals watching this game at home, watch how G. Feller just sees the court as he's dribbling the basketball. His eyes are always up. He's using both his right and his left hand effectively. That's what you want out of your point guard. And the fact that he's 6'3", just an added benefit for these Colfax Bulldogs to have a guy that big who can run the point. Meanwhile, the 6-2 forward, Justin Baraducci, draws the foul. The shot does not go. He'll go to the line, shooting two. Yeah, it's, kind of, the first. it's kind of a fire and ice uh, duo there with, with those two guys. Baraducci does all that hard work inside, gets kind of the grunt points, as we call them. And, and you've got G. Feller out there out front running the show. Really nice combination. Don't forget about Kyle Johnson as well as the second free throw won't go. Three players scoring in double figures, averaging double figure scoring in the regular season. Johnson, G. Feller, and Baraducci. Two to Lake. Looks like the hold for that last shot. Shot clock is off. 18 seconds to go, trailing by seven. There's the quack, quack chant from Two to Lake, the Ducks. This is Connor Vicarious. Three-point attempt on the way, no good from Corey Keefe. And a rebound, a last-second shot by G. Feller. Actually tried to get a home run pass uh, down there, but uh, no good. At the end of one, Colfax leads it by seven, 11-4. Stay with us. You're watching the State B semifinals only on SWX.
High School Basketball on SWX brought to you by Inland Power and Light Company. Proud to be a State B sponsor. Back for the start of the second quarter here at Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena. And the Ducks trying to quack back in this one, trailing 11 to four. Two to Lake down 11-4 against Colfax. And a foul called against the Bulldogs to start this second quarter of action. We're talking about how the Ducks have been uh, tested in the regular season. Three teams, in fact, from the Central. Two Bs coming into the state tournament this year. Adna, Tudor Lake, and Wakaiakum all in the same league. So all in the state tournament this year. So, uh, wow, tough place to play out of. And uh, you talk about a battle-tested crew. You're not going to find anybody more tested than the Ducks. Well, we saw Adna. Well, we're going to see Adna in our second game here tonight, Sam. There's the inbound. The shot by Hayes will rattle in, getting the shooter's roll. And more interior play there for two to leg. Here's the one part of the Colfax offense. They'll uh, start to explore a little bit is looking deep first. Try to penetrate that press and really keep them honest. But you have to have self-confidence to be able to do that. Well, they're a confident team. I mean, they, they, they play with a, with a high level of spirit and confidence. Johnson once again. And wow. I'll tell you what. If he can keep doing that, that's going to open things up for Berducci, G. Feller. Great start for Kyle Johnson. Three three-pointers for the senior guard. Nine points. 14-6 Colfax the lead. Just over seven to play here in the half. You know, Colfax playing with great perimeter defense right now, really extending that defense. Fuller with a miss on the three-point attempt. And you wonder, until Tuta Lake can show that they can shoot that outside shot, are they better served to pack it in a little bit? Because that's the only place that Tuta Lake's been able to score here this evening. Johnson passing now to Tyler Stevenson in the deep corner. Colfax getting a little stagnant right now. Here's G. Feller. He's got some range. Has yet to make a three-pointer in this tournament, though. 0 for 4 from three-point land. Last night in the quarterfinals, six on the shot clock, meanwhile. And fouled in the lane is Justin Baraducci. And I think uh, Colfax kind of dodged a bullet there. Time was not on their side, and it looked like Heinzman bailed him out with that foul in the paint. But, you know, the thing that you love about him, and again, I think it starts with G. Feller, is he has a very good understanding of the shot clock, of where his offense is at. He knows his, his teammates well. Didn't panic whatsoever, got into a set. And quickly, they were able to get the ball right to the rim with Berducci. Berducci makes the first, coming off an 11-point night last night against LaConnor. Also had seven rebounds, did that senior forward. And he converts on both. Berducci now 3 of 4 from the free throw line. It's a 10-point Colfax lead. And Colfax so balanced on offense last night. Three guys in double figures. They spread the wealth very nicely. Here's Hayes now. They'll turn it over. And Brandon G. Fellett will bring it up for the Bulldogs. The shoe on the proverbial other foot there as the Bulldogs create the turnover. Yeah, he does it, does it all. Great help defense. Saw where the open space was. Picks up the steal. Foul will be called on Connor Vicarious to try to get the entry pass. And it seems, Sam, like Tudor Lake is just trying to outmuscle Colfax right now when Colfax has the ball and these officials are trying to set this tone early and not let this physical play get out of hand so they're calling these fouls as you see Colfax can't get it in gonna have to go for a timeout here boy all eyes right there we're on number 12 Kyle Johnson trying to break free for an inbound three-pointer but uh, wisely taking a timeout before the uh, time violation so they'll get another chance at that inbound now there's head coach Eric Swanson talking to his ducks you know, right now, it's got to be about offense for Tudor Lake. They've, uh, they've struggled mightily on their end of the court. Not playing bad defense, but uh, the fact they can't score is a, is uh, it's got to be concerning to that coaching staff. We'd like to take a moment to thank Arrow Machinery for helping sponsor the State B Basketball Tournaments and the broadcast. Good luck to all the participants and our own Colfax Bulldogs. Arrow Machinery for all your farming needs. 6 one to play here in the second quarter. Colfax leading it 16-6. And right away, a miss at point-blank range by Tyler Stevenson. The 
Shot is waved off. They'll say the foul happened before the shot. Well, you've seen a couple of situations now where the officials have not allowed the, con the continuation. We've seen plenty of times where that ball has been counted good, but they're consistent. They That's all you can ask for, right? It was right? on the other end that they called the very same way, so... You're right. As long as they're consistent, that's all the team can, team's going to ask for. Heinzman the miss. Last touch by Texas Wary trying to get the offensive rebound out of bounds. It'll be Colfax basketball. Yeah, I'm not sure, Sam, that that's a shot Heinzman needs to be taking. I mean, he's a good player. Probably can hit that shot, but they need him to be a force down underneath. At 6-3, averages 16 points per game. Had 19 last night. Needs to establish himself down low first. The Bulldog basketball trying to extend their lead by 10. This is G. Feller holding on to the rock here with 5.30 to go. And that quack quack uh, crowd a uh, little bit quiet right now. Johnson almost had a four three-pointer, but they'll get the offensive rebound in a second chance. Uh, and the all eyes on Johnson. What happens is they lose sight of the basketball. And don't pick up the rebound and turns into second chance points for Colfax. Justin Baraducci with a finish and he has five points and the lead now stands at 12. Colfax's largest lead of the ball game. Tootle Lake better get it together quick here otherwise Colfax is going to start going on a run. Torrey Keith going to drive. Kick back out. Wide open look at three. Weary no good. Unable to get the rebound, Tyler York, Colfax basketball as it landed in G. Feller's hands. Boy, and again, those looks just look so off coming off the hands of those two Lake shooters. Four and a half to play, 12-point lead. G. Feller, a little fadeaway jumper, kind of a Michael Jordan-esque feathery touch there. He has four points, and it's 20 to six Bulldogs. Well, I watched Colfax yesterday, and there were more than a couple college coaches watching their game. I got to believe that Brandon G. Feller was the focus of that attention. Craig Elo from Eastern Washington, one of those coaches in attendance. Of course, speaking of Michael Jordan. Yeah, <laughs> we, we mentioned Michael Jordan and Elo in the same breath. How many times has that happened? Quite a few with their uh, lockups in the uh, NBA uh, playoffs between the Cavaliers and the Bulls. More than Coach Elo would probably want <laughs> us to talk about, I'm sure. Driving almost uncontested is Corey Keith. I think he was a little bit surprised how good a look he got there. Losing the dribble there is Tyler Stevenson. He'll regather and get it up to Kyle Johnson. Johnson now on the drive, losing the dribble. As that defense collapsed right around him. Yeah, there really hasn't been much for Colfax at the basket. Most of their looks have come from beyond the arc, as you see there. Johnson running out of clock. Johnson came off the screen, fired a three, well off the mark on the other end. There's Hayes, no good. Follows up his own miss, that one won't go. Third time, gonna be the charm. Free throws. Coming up when we come back, 20 to 6 Colfax with a 14 point lead. State B coverage on SWX brought to you in part by CenturyLink, connecting you to what matters most. Sam Adams and my good friend Bill Ames courtside at Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena. So Colfax leading Tudor Lake 20 to 6. So and be a coach, no. be a coach, will you? What does Tudor Lake need to do? They got six points. We got three minutes until halftime. Well, I, I would say whatever 
whatever Eric Swanson just told his team there, because there's a three-pointer uh, made by Anthony Heidensman, his first bucket made after a 19-point night last night against Dayton. Perhaps that's the key. We just need to just be quiet, pay attention, be <laughs> quiet, and let them shoot. I like that. Brady Ellis with it. Now we're to Baraducci. Baraducci, the pass, entry pass, and a collision down in the paint. Jay Hart uh, ran into two uh, defensive backs down there. You know, and that's a tough one for me. I mean, you're going to see it again here. That ball is, is up in the air. You're, you're both kind of going for it. And, yeah, Hart took the, took, the, uh, took the worst of it. But I'm not sure there's a foul there. I think that's just balls in the air. You're both going for it. And uh, no call, but they, they get uh, they get Hayes for the foul. And a little turnaround by Baraducci won't go. And it's one of those calls that you'll make when it's getting chippy, when both uh, teams are escalating uh, the, the, the conflict down there. But when it's it's being a clean game game so far, it's the kind of call you can let go, right? Yeah, I think you just let it go. Maybe no whistle and, and let them keep playing. 2.30 to play here in this second quarter. Here's Kyle Johnson. He'll drive, put it up. It won't go. And just making sure, okay, they'll give him continuation. <laughs> and he'll go to the line shooting too. Yeah, we'll assume nothing at this point. <laughs> but this one I do think is pretty obvious. He's in the air going up for the shot. That to them is continuation. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's not a shooting foul. That's continuation. And only in the State B tournament will you have a player turn around and apologize to the cameraman <laughs> for running into him. You're not going to get that at the 4A tournament. No. They're going well, to get out of the way. They're used to those cameras, too. Yeah, you know? well. They get spoiled, I tell they you. They do such a good job here. I'll tell you, growing up here in Spokane, coming to these games as a kid, the old Coliseum, and those are some great memories. The spokesman had the... Had some of the old pictures in this week, and those brought back some great memories of what they've done here. Just, just a really special time for the city of Spokane. A rich history for sure. Anthony Heinzman, no go on that three-point attempt as we near the two-minute mark. Colfax in control, leading 21 to nine. A 12-point Bulldog lead. Brady Ellis setting up the offense now. Three-pointer from the wing, no good by G. Feller. And G. Feller, though, will pull down the long rebound. Yeah, Fortuitous bounce as he brings it in. Well, Jay Hart working his tail off down there underneath to keep that ball alive, allowing G. Feller to come in and grab that ball. So nice job, Jay Hart. G. Feller creates his own shot. He got it to fall. He's got seven, and Colfax has itself a 15-point lead. You know, watched him last night. I didn't see a lot from the outside from G. Feller. He's proven tonight, though, that's a part of his game that he's very comfortable with. A three-point attempt uh, going nowhere near the rim. Now in transition, three-point attempt on the way is good. Brady Ellis to open up the lead now, 27-9 with 119 to play in the second quarter. Well, and again, we've said the name a lot already here, Sam. I suspect we're going to keep saying his name over the course of this game. G. Feller, look at his eyes are up with the left hand. He gets the ball out quickly, and most importantly, he gets it to the shooter right in rhythm gets it to the chest level so all he has to do is just catch and shoot he doesn't have to worry about anything else Brandon G Feller is doing a great job running the show here for the Col Colfax Bulldogs Colfax after a slow start last night against LaConnor went 11 of 17 from the field in the second half and Colfax opening it up here now ahead of schedule here in the second quarter Inland Power and Light, we'd like to take a moment to salute all of our student athletes who are participating in tonight's ball game. Inland Power and Light Company, proud to be a State B sponsor. 27 to nine, Colfax with 119 to go. And I'll tell you what, Colfax uh, might have uh, dodged a bullet in that first round matchup in the quarterfinals. The Bulldogs went just three of 16 from three point range in that ball game, but thanks to some stingy defense, uh, Colfax able to emerge with a 46-38 victory last night, uh, yesterday, excuse me, against LaConnor. That was an early afternoon game in the quarterfinals. Yes, yeah, Sam, and it wasn't really until that fourth quarter where Colfax was able to pull away. Really a, a dogfight there with LaConnor through most of that game. You don't want to get in a dogfight with a bulldog. Here's Connor Vicarious. Maybe take the shot there, try to draw a foul. He'll do exactly that. 
you know, you, you get the Colfax defender up in the air, and uh, that's exactly what you do. It's the veteran move there, and Vicarious going to the line. Well, you see the look on his face as he walks to the foul line. He meant business. I think Vicarious came out of that timeout with one thing in mind, and that is I'm going to get something going for my team. Whether it's the free throw line or making the field goal, he was going to make something happen. So give credit to that senior for coming in and, and trying to get something sparked for the offense. And Vicarious with some unfinished business here in the state tournament as he uh, drops d down both free throws. He only got 15 minutes in last uh, game out against Dayton before fouling out with nine points and four rebounds. On the other end, that shot will not go. And getting the rebound, Vicarious. And called for a foul underneath the rim. Yeah, they're going to get Vicarious. You know, that's again, that's another one of those calls where you get Colfax playing aggressive defense on the rebound. You'll see it again here. Vicarious just grabs the ball and, and has Baraducci just trying to lean into him and trying to create space for himself. Again, I, I'm not sure there's a call there. Well, there's a good old fashioned flop there, too. I, I, I think so. And perhaps, <laughs> perhaps the other official thought so as well because a little bit of a makeup call there on the moving screen. Well, in the end, maybe it just comes out even in the wash. 27 to 11, Colfax elite, 50 seconds to play. Two to Lake Ball as Vicarious brings it up the floor. And G. Feller is going to get a break for the remainder of this half. Much deserved or well-deserved break for sure. Here's a turnaround, uh, then a give to Corbin and a foul down there in the low block. And I think we're going to get Baraducci there trying to get up in the air and G Feller quickly will come back in for this last offensive possession for Colfax two second differential 2.1 to be exact between the game clock and the shot clock 37.1 as you can see on your TV screen this will be a shooting foul here in the bonus not yet excuse me I was right the first time. We are in the bonus. Just look. Seven team fouls for Colfax. So front end of the one and one by Jared Corbett goes in. Always trust that first instinct, right? That's what I've always been told. It never seemed to work out for me, however, in school. I always <laughs> would change my, change my answer. It never seemed to work out, although I don't think either the first or second option I chose ever was the correct answer. Really struggled with that, Sam. Oh, well, we got a one-second differential here, so uh, I think the Bulldogs are going to try to take this down to the final second, work for that uh, final shot. But Tuta Lake, with some tight defense, they can make them work for that shot here. And who else would have their ball in their hand at the end of a quarter? Here's Kyle Johnson with it now. Three seconds on the shot clock. He's going to have to take it. It does not draw iron, so it'll be a shot clock violation with .8 seconds on the clock. Some players uh, look like they were headed towards the locker room. It's like, uh, hey, guys, uh, you got time for one more play. Not much time, but just enough time. Yeah, they thought it was the end of the end of the half, and Colfax running some substitutions in again here so that Colfax doesn't pick up a silly foul. It'll be Austin Hoffman inbound now for the Ducks, who trail by 15. It's going to be pretty much a catch and shoot. Heinzman, good look, wouldn't have counted. A little bit late. 27-12 the score at the half. Colfax with a lead against Tootle Lake. The winner goes to the state championship game tomorrow in two Bs. Stay with us, we got more coming up.
Tonight's halftime report is brought to you by Western Peterbilt. Whether you're buying new or used big rigs, parts or services, we're confident Western Peterbilt will exceed your needs. Four locations to serve you in Liberty Lake, Pasco, Moses Lake, and Yakima. To show our appreciation, you can enter to win four shock tickets and an autographed shock football opening night, March 12th in the AFL season. Just go to khq.com slash Peterbilt to enter and get a chance to win. We're at the half here. Colfax leads to the Lake 27 to 12. And the winner heads to the state championship game. And uh, Colfax right now, business as usual, right? I mean, the, the G. Feller and Johnson combination working to a tee so far. Well, Johnson hitting it from long range. G. Feller just getting guys open looks, doing a little scoring of his own. And on the defensive end, Tudor Lake just can't put the ball in the hole. They've got to figure out a way to score here in this second half to get back in it. Yeah, they're able to generate some points off of defense, have the Ducks. So we'll see if they can crank it up even more when we come back to the third quarter. Stay with us. You're watching High School Basketball, the state 2B tournament live on SWX. This portion of the game brought to you in part by Community Colleges of Spokane, where the leadership of tomorrow is paving the road to success through academics and athletics. Colfax leading it by 15, 27, 12 at the half. Stay with us the third quarter coming up live on SWX.
Aero Machinery is proud to sponsor the State B Tournament broadcast. Good luck to all the participants and our own Colfax Bulldogs. Aero Machinery for all your farming needs. Colfax leading at 27-12, so go Bulldogs indeed. They have two quarters away from going to the state championship game. This second half of action sponsored by your Inland Empire Toyota dealers. Toyota is moving forward, and the Bulldogs will start off on offense in the blue and gold, and a quick foul right away. Let's break down some of the first half stats. Kyle Johnson, 10 points. G. Feller, Brandon G. Feller with seven, and Justin Berducci with seven as well. Your high scores for Colfax. Meanwhile, leading score for Toodle Lake, Zach Hayes, four points on two of seven shooting. And the big number, uh, Bill Ames, uh, there's just no getting around this one, is this shot will go by Justin Baraducci. He has nine. Big stat, two to Lake, four of 23 from the field in the first half, 17% shooting. It uh, really starts there, Sam. I mean, rebounding's about even. Nice put back there for Fuller. Well, he gets uh, two points and a rebound in the process after an eight-point rebound night his last time out against Dayton. They've had some looks. They just haven't gotten the shots to fall. Yeah, and they've had looks in near the basket that they haven't been able to put away. Certainly the three-point shot nowhere near being where they needed to win this game, one of ten. Here's just the Justin pace. Berducci, by the way, almost looked like he's going to throw up an alley-oop lob. There's Stevenson on the drive. The scoop will go with four on the shot clock from Tyler Stevenson. Uh, and that's an indication that it's just your night when those shots go in. Get the shooter's roll on that one. Here's Anthony Heinzman, always a threat to shoot from the perimeter. And a steal. Loose ball, kicked around, and here's G. Feller. Look out, whip pass at the last second. Somehow winds up in the possession of Jay Hart, who missed a point blank range. Yeah, two unselfish by G. Feller. He had a clear lane to the basket. Heinzman's gonna lock that one up, but comes up empty. G. Feller on that last possession, Sam, would have been better just to go right at the rim. But uh, being the unselfish player is, gave it up and forced the turnover. Good defense on the other end, though. Every once in a while, you see that player who you'd like to shoot more than he does. Kyle Johnson, he's shooting right about as many as you'd, you'd want, but maybe a little bit more. He drops his fourth three-pointer of the ball game. He now has a game high and team high 13. Well, we're going to see two awfully good teams in this second game as, well, if it weren't for Fuller here in the second half, it would uh, it would be incredibly ugly. We've had a couple occasions now where we've seen a uh, Kyle Johnson three-point attempt get followed up by a Jeremy Fuller three-point attempt. On the other end, a bucket and one. Justin Baraducci will go to the line and a chance at a three-point play. And how special is it to have two players, Baraducci and G. Fowler, 6'2 and 6'3, who can handle the ball in the open court, goes up with the left hand, smooth as silk, and a great finish. Let's remind our viewers at home, when, when you talk State B tournaments, and we talk small schools, we mean small enrollment. There are some big time players and some big athletes on these teams. This is Baraducci, the 6'2 uh, senior, and he knocks down that shot. Uh, you said it, partner. You can see G. Feller and know that he's going to be playing college basketball some year, some, at some point when he's done with his high school career, which he's still got another year of high school ball left. Just watching him play, Baraducci looks more like a football player, but uh, he can he can play on the hardwood as well. You gotta take that hard nose mentality to that basketball court. This is G Feller, entry pass down low, off the glass, Baraducci, no good, and a tough rebound by Zach Hayes. Hayes now in transition to Vicarious. Vicarious short jumper will not go, and an offensive put back and one. Jeremy Fuller is having a heck of a second half here. Yeah, story of the second half for the Ducks, Jeremy Fuller. See it again here, just working hard to get position. No block out by the Bulldogs and Fuller there all by himself with a quick putback and foul. Fuller with a couple of putbacks in this half. 5'11 senior guard, chance to go into double figure scoring, and he does with 10. Substitution now into the ball game. Tyler Stevenson coming out for Brady Ellis for the Bulldogs. You know, Sam, we're going to see two awfully good teams in our second game here tonight with Adna and Northwest Christian and assuming this score holds up for the next quarter and a half and 
It is, in fact, Colfax is playing in the final. I'm not sure they could be beat playing this way. They're playing awfully well here tonight. Again, just a reminder, there are two games going on concurrently right now. So when you hear those horns, the uh, whistles, they're not necessarily for this game as well. So uh, we'll, we'll get you covered, but there are two games going on here at the same time. Brady Ellis off the bench will hit the three. And when Colfax can do that, when they can get those long bombs from guys they don't normally expect to get a lot of productivity from, that makes it awfully hard as Judah Lake finally getting a little bit of the stroke here in the second half. They just can't get stops. Corey Keefe with that three-point make equals his output from his first-round matchup against Dayton with three points in 16 minutes. They'll take a timeout as uh, Reese Jenkins will take it. Now, you know, that's the one part of the game of basketball that's really evolved. Coaches who see their players get in trouble, they've been given enough timeouts now over the course of the game with the 30-second timeouts and well as the full. They can, they can afford to burn a timeout when they see a player who's, who's caught like that. So really heads up play there by Reese Jenkins. All teams from all around the state coming here to Spokane to play in the State B tournament. Four of them going on at the same time. 2B, 1B boys and girls. We want to welcome all of you joining us not only in our viewing area but online from around the state and around the country on the WIAA website. There are live broadcasts going on right now. So those of you enjoying the game tonight here on the internet, welcome and uh, thank you for tuning in here on the WIAA. Bulldog basketball as Brandon G. Filler comes out and uh, brings it up now for the Bulldogs who have a 17-point lead. They've led by as many as 20. Here's Kyle Johnson, strong first half. Giving it up now, Justin Veraducci tries to get an entry pass. Nearly going out of bounds. Two to Lake ball now as Corey Keefe will bring it up now for the Ducks who have a big fight ahead of them. And he'll take it. No, he won't. At the last second, he decided to try to hand it off to Anthony Heinzman. And that pass was picked off. Law pass down low. Easy picking for two is Baraducci with 14. Uh, again, that's just G. Feller. Great court vision. Saw no one had gotten back to pick up Baraducci and threw a perfect lob to him right near the basket as Tudelay comes right back. But boy, G. Feller. Doing such a nice job with Colfax. Connor Vicarious, the bucket, the free throw coming when we come back. Colfax leading it 42 25. State B coverage on SWX brought to you by Northwest Seed and Pet. Spokane's complete seed and pet supply. Hey, and don't forget, uh, as we welcome you watching from all around the country online and here in our viewing area, uh, that you can check out those scores. They'll be going on 24 hours a day. On that ticker, you see it at the bottom part of your screen. Our uh, crews are working feverishly to update those scores from not only the State B tournaments, but also from the 4A and 3A state tournaments in Tacoma, 2As and 1As in Yakima, and the 5As, 4As, and 3As in Idaho. So thanks to our crew uh, for putting those uh, numbers out there for you. Colfax with a three-point attempt, no good by Kyle Johnson. A rare miss there. And uh, 
Boy, oh boy, uh, you've been following what's been going on. You're a University High School grad, and you've been following what's going on in the 4As and 3As over in Tacoma. I'll tell you what, I'm incredibly proud as, as somebody who lives over on the eastern side of the state of what these teams have done at all levels uh, representing the east side of, uh, of Washington. The, the GSL done incredibly well. Uh, certainly here you've got a lot of teams from, from east of the mountains that have played well. Uh, GSL is hanging tough. CV girls in the final. University's boys fall a little bit short against Rainier Beach, a very good Rainier Beach team, probably the best team in the state, any division. Uh, we'll find out tonight if, or tomorrow night if they can win the, uh, the championship. Gonzaga Preps girls go down, and tonight still to play, Sam. We've got the University girls and the Center Valley boys playing for that uh, that spot in the state championship game. So great job over there by, by our GSL schools. Stay tuned for all those highlights, the 4As, 3As, 2As, 1As in Washington, all of the state Bs here in Spokane, and all of your Idaho state tournament highlights. All tonight coming up at 10.30 on Friday night, fast break. G. Feller's shot no good. I believe his foot was on the line, and meanwhile, uh, Jeremy Fuller trying to bring it up, and he lost his dribble, and it'll be Colfax basketball, a little bit too aggressive there. Yeah, just a little unlucky. Unlucky, got a chance to get to the ball and try to get by G. Feller. G. Feller, you know, number one, he's got those long arms at 6'3", but he's quick as well, so he can stay with the smaller guards. And he can keep his dribble. He, he's impressively coordinated. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be seeing this kid playing at the college level very soon. You know, I'm not sure if it's, a, if it's a growth spurt with G. Feller, and he was always maybe played the guard position was smaller, but if he's always been this height, then credit to his coaches as a youth to keep him dribbling. A lot of time, those bigger kids... They get stuck playing down in the post in youth basketball, and there you see a great finish once again at the rim for G. Feller. But he does such a good job handling the ball. You just credit whoever coached him as a young kid. Let him just lower that shoulder. He had that instinct, that shooter's instinct. He knew he was going to take it to the rack. And just comfortable with the left hand. I mean, there was no way for the defender to be able to come across him and steal that ball. Again, a great stroke at the free throw line. Just a complete player. And Boy, with one year left of high school, it'll be fun to to, uh, to keep an eye on this young man. Boy, and I know he's averaging 16.3 points per game this season in the regular season. Watching him play, and we've seen his highlights all season long on Friday Night Fast Break as well when we've gone to Colfax game. This kid could easily be scoring 25 or 30 a night. And, uh, you just see, though, the unselfishness how few attempts he actually takes uh, on any given night that he could easily be filling it up for 25 points a night. You know, there's some guys, Sam, who are triple-double guys. He's a triple-double guy. I mean, he's a guy who could, like you say, he could score at will whenever he wants. But you know what? Those guys... I'm going to see a little conversation here. I believe that ball should be an over and back on Colfax. But they're well, it depends on it. who it touched last. Yeah, I think that's the right car. I think the, it went off of G. Feller's hands and, and over into the backcourt. This will be Tudor Lake basketball now as Zach Hayes will inbound. Get some substitutions as well for Colfax. But G. Feller is just one of those guys who you just, you know, he could, you think he could almost average in double figures, assists, rebounds, and points. He's that good. And he comes up with a big block there. Whip pass by Anthony Heinzman. Nothing doing there, though, on the finish. And Colfax will slowly bring it up now. 20-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. And here's Baraducci. Baraducci lost the ball. And here comes Hayes to bring it up for Toodle Lake. Three-second differential on the shot clock and game clock. Corbett for three. No go. And it's a little bit short. And those missed three-point shot attempts, really the story of the ball game tonight for Toodle Lake. It really is. I mean, they just haven't been able to get anything going, Sam. A little bit of a spark there from Fuller to start the second half. But, you know, one of ten in the first half. I don't believe they've hit any here in the second. Maybe Fuller had one, two threes here in the second half. But it's still not what they need to get back in this game. Another miss there. Yeah, Keefe with a three-pointer. Fuller with a three here in this second half for Tuta Lake. Ten seconds to play. A steal now. Here's Fuller to bring it up. He can pull up. All right, they'll pass off. Instead, Hayes going to the line, shooting two with 4.4 on the clock. 
Hayes recovering from a 1 of 11 shooting night. In the quarterfinal game against Dayton, he did manage to score 10 points on just 1 of 11 field goals. He had eight rebounds and five assists in that one. So when you're not getting it done shooting, that doesn't mean you still can't contribute. And Zach Hay is managing to do just exactly that on Thursday. And he's been the guy who's been assigned to Brandon Gfeller most of this game. And when you're working that hard on the defensive end, that's got to take, take something out of you offensively. Second one won't go. Baradocci with the rebound. He'll take the three-quarter shot. It'll be short. At the end of three, Colfax in control. They have never trailed in this one. Fourth quarter coming up. Bulldogs lead it 45-28 in this 2B semifinal. State B coverage on SWX brought to you by Parker Toyota. No problem at Parker Toyota means an even better car buying experience. Parker Toyota, winner of the President's Award for 25 consecutive years of superb customer service. As we start the fourth quarter, we welcome you back here for the State 2B semifinal game. Colfax leading wire to wire as Tudor Lake will try to dig themselves out of this 45-28 fourth quarter deficit. Tuta Lake actually uh, stayed within two for that third quarter. Colfax taking that quarter, 18-16, and a quick score for Tuta Lake. That'll be Zach Hayes. Well, Zach Hayes is doing it himself there, driving right down the middle. Tuta Lake coming out with a little bit of aggressiveness here to start this fourth quarter. Need to, to get back in this game, down 15. Colfax, meanwhile, can smell that finish line. It's just 7.22 away from going to the state championship game. And you just watch them run their offense. Missed shot there, but of course Baraducci there's Baraducci with the rebound. Working hard. He'll put it up. That one won't go. No third opportunity there as uh, Hayes will pull down the rebound. Kind of do-everything guy. He'll take it coast to coast for two. He's in double figures with 11. Fuller with 10. Colfax falling asleep on the transition defense. Just barely getting that pass ahead to Tyler Stevenson as they break that press. And what you're going to see here for Colfax, you can get him into a set. And they're just going to run some motion offense, try to get a good look. A little pick and roll. And they'll call a charge on G. Feller. And G. Feller dropping that shoulder. Trying to get to the basket. Again, you're going to see it here. Nice play here. A little 1-4 set. 
Heisman, though, in position to take that charge. And a little bit of a run here for the Ducks. Get their crowd fired up as well, and uh, this place is going to pop if this shot goes in. Thank you, Jeremy. You made me look like a genius. Well, I'll tell you, and there's a turnover. Colfax throwing the ball away. This, this press and a good timeout for Reese Jenkin. Colfax starting this fourth quarter a little lackadaisical, thinking this game may have already been in hand. They've trailed by as many as 20. It's down to a 10-point game. Tudor Lake trailing just by 10, 45-35. Still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. Well, there's plenty of time, and if you can shoot the ball from the outside like Fuller did in that last possession, and you can get stops defensively, you can close this gap quickly. Championship coverage of the 2012 State B Tournament set for tomorrow afternoon right here on SWX. 2B boys will tip off first at 3 p.m. We'll have the 2B girls at 5, 1B boys 7, and then our night wraps up with the 1B girls at 9 p.m. Pick your favorite or watch all four of them. It's the State B Championships tomorrow right here on SWX. You're seeing some of the action on the other court here tonight at Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena. Colton girls going for a four-peat, trying to win four consecutive 1B titles. Colton leading Almira Cooley Hardline 37 to 30 on that other court with 720 in regulation. Yeah, those girls from ACH trying to get the double dip. The boys only already qualifying for that 1B championship game against their nemesis Valley Christian. See if the girls can uh, give the fans of ACH double reason to come out to the arena tomorrow night. A chance now for the Ducks to cut this lead to single digits. And they're moving the ball a lot better now. They're looking, they're mo the, the passes are a lot sharper. They're looking for the open man, and here's Heinzman with the three. No good. Rebounded, though. Here's Fuller for three. That'll be well short, but a rebound on the offensive end by Heinzman, and he'll be able to draw the foul. This will be a non-shooting foul, but they'll get possession once again with 5.49 to play. And it's just sure out hustle that's getting to the lake back in this game. First wants to the ball and the rebound. Heinzman does a great job there. Read the shot extremely well. Saw that thing was going to be short. Got underneath the basket to catch the air ball and then the bump foul by Hart. At the free throw nut line now is Heinzman. Anthony Heinzman shooting two. Colfax hasn't been pushed at all during this game, Sam. How do they respond? You got to believe G. Feller is going to have something to say about it. In the bonus, Heinzman drops both. And it is a single-digit deficit now. Trailing by eight are the Ducks. Trying to break the press are the Bulldogs. Out of bounds, and it'll be Duck basketball. Big-time comeback for Tudor Lake. A chance to now cut the lead to six, five, or even four. Here's Connor Vicarious with the ball. Out of bounds, remains Tudor Lake ball. 5.30 to play. Tudor Lake last going to a state championship game. They were in 1A in 2000 and 1999. They went to the state championship games. And then, of course, in 2B, just going a few years ago in 2008 against Ray Ricks and Northwest Christian. Looks like we're going to get a, a foul away from the ball, and that's going to go on Hayes. Trying to free himself. He and Baraducci locked up on a kind of a man-on-man -man situation there, and they're gonna get Hayes for that foul. Baraducci handing back off to G. Feller, back to Baraducci. They break the press. Nice recovery by the Ducks getting back on defense. Here's G. Feller now. This might be G. Feller time here. He'll pull up, kick it back out. Baraducci had to look for a moment. Stevenson now, short jumper, will not go. And Heinzman gets the rebound. Here come the Ducks in transition. Hayes from the free throw line, no good. That would have been a big shot for the Ducks instead of rebound by Stevenson. Now too quick of a shot. You got to get into your offense. You got plenty of time here. No need for this one-man show right now from Hayes. We'll see a little bit too much of that. 
in that last possession. It's a timeout for Colfax. Reese Jenkins taking the timeout. Boy, oh boy, what a run here in this fourth quarter. Colfax led 11-4 after one, 27-12 after two, and 45-28 after three, but now it's just 45 to 37. Nine unanswered points here in this fourth quarter by the Ducks of Tudor Lake. Now it's all started with their defense, Sam. Really picking it up, first of all, with the full court press. I mean, even when Colfax gets into their sets, you're just seeing a much more confident, aggressive Tudor Lake team. Last couple of possessions, though, offensively, they've hurried things. I'm sure one of the things that Coach Swanson is talking to them about is settling things down, get the open looks, don't rush. With 448 still left in this game, plenty of time with the defense that they're playing to get this thing knotted up. Jeremy Fuller, the key player down the stretch here for the Ducks. Two big three-pointers after going 0 for 5 from three-point range in that quarterfinal win against Dayton. Yeah, Fuller really the guy that kept a minute the start of the second half. Really not much of anything going on for Tudor Lake. He came out and scored seven straight. Is that a big part in it here in the last couple of minutes as well? 17 fouls for Colfax. Seven team fouls for the Bulldogs. Four for Tudor Lake. Bulldog basketball. Baraducci on the inbound. He has eyes for Tyler Stevenson who gets it at center. Court a steal. And here's Zach Hayes. He'll take it to the rack. No good. Boy. He takes that shot 90 times. He's going to make it every single time except for one. I tell you what, I can't believe he missed that shot. Well, great steal, first of all, by Hayes all over the court here. Really focused. A little bit of a bump there, but a good no call. Stevenson did a nice job of getting back. You just got to have more concentration at the rim. As they break the press. Shot no good. Vicarious will get the rebound. Losing the dribble. Turnover ahead. Here's G. Feller to finish. And their first basket here in the fourth quarter. And that starts with the, de the defense of G. Feller who gets the steal with the long arms. Able to finish it as well. Shot waved off. And Heinzman will go to the line. You know, one of the things that Eric Swans is talking to his team about, you get the steal or the rebound. Again, don't be in such a rush. Through the lake, trying to get the ball down the court quickly. You forget about where those defenders are. Much better off just to get into your set. Heinzman at the line on a one and one. 19 point effort against Dayton. He was three of four from three point land. Just five points in this one. Make it six. Yeah, they'd love to get a big last four minutes and 14 seconds out of this young man. The 6'3 senior averaging 16 points a game. Second one's good. Anthony Heinzman with seven. It's an eight point game. What a comeback for Tudor Lake here in this fourth quarter. Colfax with just one field goal made here in this final period. Assuming we don't go to overtime. At this point, it looks hey, anything can happen. And you see number two, Corey Keith. He is responsible for not allowing Brandon G. Feller to have the balls. A near steal there for Hayes. Take a timeout, 47-39. This one far from over. Stay with us. You're watching High School Basketball on SWX.
That looks pretty big when you have that vantage point. It's looked pretty small, though, for Colfax here in the fourth quarter to the tune of just one field goal made. Yeah, it's a great defense for Tudor Lake is creating the problems for the Colfax offense. Zach Hayes locked in to Brandon G. Feller right now, getting the assignment to try to contain the talented 6'3 junior. And that 15-point halftime lead has been cut in half. Eight-point lead now for Colfax. G. Feller for three. He'll get it to go. You, know, you got to wonder. I know the coach Jenkins has a big whiteboard there over there on the Colfax bench. I'm not sure that there was a lot to draw up there. It was Brandon. I'm going to give you the ball, son. Go up and make a big shot. And he certainly did it for his team. And can almost score at will. And uh, right after that timeout, I saw G. Feller looking at his coach, Reese Jenkins, and, and uh, the expression on his face said it all. It looked like, just, just take over. You're taking this shot. I don't care where it is, you're taking the shot. Because remember, the shot clock was a factor, too. There's about six seconds on that shot clock. A hack there uh, on Baraducci. That'll be now five team fouls, I believe, for Tudor Lake. This will be a non-shooting foul. And it is five fouls on the Ducks. Here's a look at that three-pointer, though. Never any doubt from, from that young man. And there's nothing Zach Hayes can do about that because G. Feller is such a threat to drive by you and go to the rim as he's trying to do here. You've got to respect that. That's going to create space for the three, and he dropped it. Look how much respect that young man commands out there, G. Feller. When he gets anywhere near that three-point line, look at the defense. Tighten up a little bit. He'll almost go, though, uncontested. And then a foul underneath the rim. Baraducci very slow getting up. Now they're playing man-to-man, -man, but you can see that defense kind of creeping up on him. I mean, because, I mean, that, that young man, Zach Hayes, needs a little help out there when you're defending uh, G. Feller. He, he's a tough guy to stop. Well, we had a great look at G. Feller as he was going to the rim in that last possession. And just a little hesitation, the little stutter that created the space for him. Just couldn't finish it. What a great run to the basket. Baraducci looks like he's okay. Took a hard fall. And G. Feller waiting to inbound here. We'll get some uh, discussion here between the uh, coaching staff uh, from Tudor Lake and the, uh, one of the officials. I think there was some question on maybe who the foul was called on. And G. Feller on the inbound. And to Tyler Stevenson. Ball goes out of bounds. Still Bulldog basketball. 32 on the shot clock. 2.53 to go. So Colfax trying to quell that run here. Back into double digits at 11. 50 to 39. Don't be surprised if G. Feller takes the shot here. Oh, he won't get a chance to take the shot. And a foul called on Zach Hayes. Well, Zach Hayes playing hard. Actually thought he had a pretty good defensive play there. Stepped in front of G. Feller. I mean, you talk about going out on an island on somebody. You know, I mean, there's no lonelier place than Zach Hayes where he is right there out on the floor. And there it is, the grab on the left elbow. Yeah, you saw the grab there right in front of the official. Good call. But you like how Zach Hayes is playing out here. Playing hard to the end. G. Feller makes the free throw. 52-39 now. 13-point lead inside of three minutes. Tudor Lakes run. Maybe stalling a little bit here. Three-point attempt well off the mark. And boy, oh boy. When Tudor Lake looks back at the game tape, they're going to look at so many of those shots that really seemingly had every right to go in. Uh, the three-point attempts have been well off the mark, but, Bill, there have been countless times on putback where they just missed. They just didn't go in. Yeah, I mean, they... they you watched the game last night. Their shots fell. I mean, and sometimes that's what happens. Now, credit Colfax. I think they, you know, they're playing Tudor Lake is tonight against a much better team than they faced last night in Dayton. Much more, uh, much more aggressive around the basket is the Colfax defense, and that created problems for Tudor Lake. Justin Baraducci on the front end of that one and one with 15. And you go back, Sam, to the early part of this game. Johnson, Kyle Johnson, going and hitting those early threes. 
you know, that really set the tone for this team, being able to then pound the ball inside once Tudor Lake had to respect the outside shot. Colfax never really got into a position where they had to respect the outside game of the Ducks. Meanwhile, on the other end, Jeremy Fuller's shot no good. And here comes Colfax. Kyle Johnson out of the trap. And a little bit too tight on the defense. That will be called on Anthony Heinzman. Yeah, Coach Jenkins coaching till the end here. One of the things he's telling Johnson is, look, don't get caught on the side. As You see Hayes, who played so hard out here tonight, having a tough time here. And of course, as a senior, his last high school basketball game, that's always a, a tough thing to, to lose a game like this in this environment, a semifinal game. And, you, know, you just take your hats off, though, to Zach Hayes, the way he played, left everything out on the court. Congratulations to that young man. Has nothing to hang his head over. And don't forget, th this isn't the last game. There's still the consolation games tomorrow. So uh, you don't have to end on this note. Nearing the two-minute mark now, 56-39. It's a 17-point lead. A uh, rebound made by Jared Corbett. They'll reset the offense. Corey Keith now on the drive. That one will go. And, and you know, it's funny, Sam. You bring it up, and it's a great point, the fact that Tudor Lake will have a consolation game to play tomorrow. And someone asked me earlier here when I got to the arena, you know, why do they even play those games? Well, go ask those kids at Tudor Lake why they play those games. They want to play every ounce of high school basketball they can. And if they get a chance to play for a third-place trophy tomorrow night, you know what? They should be able to have that chance. A three-point attempt and a foul. So Anthony Heinzman will go to the line shooting three. Time now to announce tonight's player of the game. It is sponsored by Red Lion Hotels. Proud to be a State B sponsor. And tonight's player of the game, that young man, number 10, Brandon G. Feller. Seven points in the first half and then really closing strong. 18 points, so 11 points after the half. Brandon G. Feller, our player of the game, brought to you by Red Lion Hotels. And like so many great players, it's when he did his damage offensively, Sam, that really made the most impact. When Tudor Lake thought they had a chance at this game, got it within eight, it was Brandon G. Feller who came out and hit a long three and, and sealed it for his team. Heinzman now a third free throw attempt coming up. After being fouled on that three-point attempt. Made the third. Substitutions now. 128 to go, and Colfax on the cusp here now of going to the state championship game. Bill, you know the last time Bulldogs went to a 2B state championship game? Just off the top of your head? I don't, but you're going to tell me, right? 1947. 1947 for a 2B championship game. Short little bunny, that one won't go from Kyle Johnson. That was a long time ago. It was. You were about 30 at that time. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We've been going at it back and forth off the air. I might as well bring it on the air. Let it, let it go. That's right. Now, 1A, Colfax going to back-to-back -back state championships in the 1A classification in 1979 and 1978. And as you look back at the state championship history in the late 70s when Colfax went back-to-back -back years, they won both of those championships against the women Christian and Kashmir. And then in the 2Bs, they won those as well. And that was, uh, th there were no tournaments in the uh, mid-1940s. And then they restarted the state 2B tournaments in 1946. And Colfax went back-to-back -back those years. Well, you think about... You know, what Colfax has done athletically the last couple of years, Sam, it's been really more about their football team and what the football team has managed to accomplish in postseason. To see the basketball team now doing some similar things for the people in that community of Colfax got to be awfully proud of their young men. Kind of interesting here, Sam. Coach Jenkins clears the bench and gets a lot of reserves into the game, give him a chance to play. One guy he's keeping on there, the guy who he wants holding the basket box is the two guys, Baraducci and G. Feller. Well, and I just wonder if he wants to bring both of those players out individually as well. 
That might be the case. Here's Baraducci now to kick it back out. And G. Filler with 30 seconds to play. Five on the shot clock. Three point attempt on the way. Just beating the shot clock no good from Justin Baraducci. And there's two more players to come out. I think you called it, partner. Out of bounds. Timeout. Let's hear the reaction from the Bulldog crowd now as their two seniors will head towards the bench. Justin Baraducci checking out. Brandon G. Feller checking out. And Tyler Stevenson also a senior checking out. Well, they've got one more important game to worry about here at this state tournament. Three-point attempt on the way. Ten seconds to play. And a rebound by Rick Scholes. And one thing's for certain, Sam, the way Colfax played here tonight, regardless if it's Adner or Northwest Christian, they're going to have their hands full with the, with the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs, top dogs here inside the semifinals. They advance to the state championship game, the 2B bracket, with a 58-44 victory. The Ducks gave them a fight in that fourth quarter. But Colfax answered the call late, pulling away and pulling it out, getting the 14-point lead and the 14-point win, 58-44. Brandon G. Feller leading the way with 18 points. We'll wrap things up, set you up for tonight's other semifinal between Northwest Christian and Adna. Stay with us. You're watching High School Basketball live on SWX.